This login page looks secure, but in the next 60 seconds, I'll bypass it without knowing the password using SQL injection. But before that, let me give you a simple explanation of how this actually works. When I enter credentials into this login page, my request is sent to the backend server. The backend then checks one thing. Does this account exist in the database or not? If yes, then I'm authenticated. If not, then it will show some kind of error. Now here's the important part. This login field expects data in a very specific format, usually something like a username and a password, nothing else. But what if I enter unexpected or illegal characters? This time, I'm interfering with the logic behind the authentication. And that's where SQL injection begins. For example, let's say I enter a single quote. That has a meaning in SQL. Now here's the problem. That quote closes the username value. I'm now outside of it. At this point, anything I type next is no longer treated as a username. It becomes part of the SQL logic. If I add something that makes the password condition true, the database returns a result. Now, in real life scenarios, this is how it usually looks. You find a login panel. Most of the time, you don't magically know the username, but usernames are easy to find. Sometimes you can guess it from the site name, or sometimes you'll see it in the contact section. So let's say I already know that a username exists. Now I enter that username into the login field. At this point, there are two conditions. Username must be correct. Password must be correct. Both conditions need to be true for login to succeed. Now, here's where SQL injection comes in. I close the username field early by adding a single quote. Instead of guessing the password, I add my own condition, a condition that is always true. And since the username already exists, the query returns a result. Now, SQL injection is not limited to login pages. Anywhere an application takes user input and uses it to talk to the database can be vulnerable. If the input reaches the database and isn't handled safely, SQL injection is possible. You've probably seen links like this. That I'd value usually tells the database which record to fetch. Behind the scenes, the application is using that value inside a SQL query. If I can control that value, I can control how the query is built. Instead of asking the database for one specific record, I can make it return more data in some cases. I can access data from other tables stored on the same database. Doing this manually is possible, but attackers usually automate this process. This is where SQL map comes in. SQL map automatically tests parameters by sending different payloads and analyzing the server's responses. It can detect whether a parameter is vulnerable to SQL injection. Every trace is fragile, every sound is Once CQL map confirms the injection, it can extract database information. Now, learning SQL injection doesn't mean you can hack any website you want, and it definitely doesn't mean you can run SQL map on every site and get results. Many websites are protected by firewalls and security filters that block these kinds of attacks. Dealing with those protections is a topic on its own and I'll cover that in a future video with a detailed explanation. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.